G'day friends, I wanted to film a very quick video, uh, I really didn't even want to edit it, so let's just see if I can do it all at once. I wanted to talk about my current obsessions, uh, and these change all the time, obviously there are things that, you know, come and go in our creative journey that we, <laughs> you know, we, we get over or maybe we've mastered and want to move on to something else. I say mastered lightly because have we ever really mastered anything? I don't know. Um, but yeah, I want to talk about the things that are just at my desk, that are always at my desk, that I'm always using, I'm always reaching for, I'm always screaming for. Uh, yeah, this first one, the Tim Holtz Tonic Studios uh, paper trimmer, paper cutter, whatever you want to call it. Uh, super easy to fit on the desk. That's what I love about it. Um, I got this recently and I've just used it for pretty much everything that I'm just cutting up. Uh, I'll find a reason just to cut anything because I've got this at my desk and it fits, it doesn't take up much room, super great blade, very ergonomic the entire design. I like this here that it can keep it flat and I don't, you know, risk chopping off my fingers or anything. I guess I could. <laughs> anyway, so um, the Tonic Studios Tim Holtz paper trimmer, paper cutter, that's what I'm obsessed with as far as mini paper cutters go because my actual uh, current obsession, which has been a yearly obsession, has been this. And uh, this is obviously not for everybody, um, and it's completely, it's not completely different to the other one that I just showed you. Essentially, it's just a paper cutter as well, but it cuts like 12 by 12. It's much larger, and this is a swing line I got from Target, and I want to say it was actually really affordable, something like 20 bucks or something. So, uh, yeah, the swing line is great. I, uh, I do so much stuff with this, especially when I'm doing like a bulk lot of everything, uh, you know, when I'm shipping out orders and stuff like that. Um, this comes in super handy, and it's a very heavy duty um, guillotine, guillotine, for something that was quite affordable. Uh, this is true, sharp blade. I've completely cut my finger before, just from like running it up there or like getting a paper. So be super careful with it. Um, I just feel like that goes without saying, but I cut myself, so... <laughs> uh, yeah, the swing line paper cutter is amazing as well. It's just really, really large, but that's what it's good for. Another obsession I have is washi tape, obviously. <laughs> but um, especially these Tim Holtz washi tapes. I just... Um, I, there's not enough time for me to go through absolutely everything, but can you just get into how amazing all of these patterns and designs are? I mean... It just, it works with pretty much everything I want to do, so I'm just, I'm really into it. Really great quality. I keep them all in this box separate just because I want to know where these specific ones are at any given moment. Moment? Moment? <laughs> moment. So I love these Tim Holtz washi tapes. Craft paper. Craft paper is a big obsession for me right now. Um, I also love to put with the craft paper these Faber-Castell polychromos. Now these are very expensive pencils. I lucked out and got a, like, a massive deal. And uh, it was so funny because the lady at the art store didn't realize that they were on that much of a clearance. I guess they just wanted to get rid of them. I have no idea. But uh, these can set you back a lot of money. And I seriously got them for about 70% off. And I bought a massive set. So it was an investment. But uh, I saved a ton of money because they were on sale. And that poor lady at the register was like, are you sure you want these ones? We can get you a different one. And I was like, no, I know. I know I want that. And uh, I feel bad for her because I think she wanted them once she realized and these were the last set. So, <laughs> um, you know, great for me. Sorry for her. Uh, <laughs> that sounds so nasty. I actually, you know, I, I wish good crafting on everybody, but I was just really happy for myself that I could grab these because these are like honestly the best pencil in the entire world. Um, and they're great for craft paper. This is like super pigmented. It's super soft, but also doesn't break on you. It's such amazing quality. And craft paper is so great because you can use pretty much anything Thing. like light colors, dark colors, it's all going to show up. And uh, this is actually a craft card stock that I've been using. So I'm super obsessed with craft at the moment. I even bought a craft traveler's insert. I've been saving Trader Joe's bags to cut them up for arts and crafts because I'm just loving craft. Arts and crafts? Craft. Craft with arts and crafts. I'm losing my mind. Another weird obsession I have at the moment is this Fisker's round punch. I don't even know what size it is. I want to say like two inch. I can't tell, but it's super ergonomical. And, uh, and yeah, I just, I'm really obsessed with punching things out in circles at the moment. Although I will say, you've got to do it quite quick. And someone suggested that I punch some aluminium foil to kind of sharpen the blade. But it, this happened like from the get-go. If you punch anything quite slow, or maybe it's just the paper or something, um, it leaves like a little bit of a tab, which is fine. I can cut that off. But I noticed that if you just like yank it, do it quickly, it won't leave that tab. So I'm obsessed with this too. Another tool I guess I'm obsessed with is these 
There are Tonic Studios as well, the Tim Holtz scissors. I have them in three sizes, and honestly, all three are amazing. Um, but this, these teeny tiny ones are perfect for fussy cutting absolutely anything. I've never found a scissor that worked just as good as these do. So these are my absolute obsession. An old obsession I have that I still have is this zebra, uh, zebra, whatever you want to call it, this brush pen. It's kind of a hard tipped brush pen and it's very f small, like very fine brush. Uh, but yeah, these are, and they're marketed, I guess, as disposable brush pens, but uh, I have a trouble throwing them away even when they're running out because <laughs> I love them. I think they're really, really great and they're really great for adding in like really dark black details. These are perfect for when I'm drawing eyelashes and winged liner. Um, that's what I love these for. I actually have had this obsession for years, but since I'm doing an obsessions video for the first time, I'll throw it in there. Uh, I remember reviewing these on a jet pens haul that I did. I'm actually loving them and I am so happy that everyone told me to put the cap on the back because I was struggling to figure out how I would ever fit these in my chunky little hands. Um, but yeah, putting the cap on the back was obviously the most uh, smart thing to do that I just didn't think of. And uh, yeah, I'm loving it. Absolutely loving both of them. This one, wait, which one? This one skips when it writes sometimes, the preppy. I don't know if it's me or maybe I just haven't used it enough yet, or maybe I'm just using it the wrong way, but this one will flow out perfectly every time, the petite uh, pilot, the mini one. And these are both supposed to be dark blues, but like I said, this one's more of a blue and this one's more of a dark blue. Um, but relative to an actual dark blue, they're both kind of light. I've been loving these that I did in the Jet Pens haul too, the Pilot High Tech Mica, the gel pens. Are these even in frame? I can barely see myself here. Um, and this one's in apricot and this one I believe is in brown or sepia maybe. I don't know what it's called, but it's in the Jet Pens video if you're curious. I've been loving both of these for sketching. I'm totally into sketching with pen straight away now. Like, well, I mean, I've been to it for a while, but uh, leaving all the construction lines and these are so fine that they just work beautifully, but they are water reactive. So that's been a bit of a downside. I love this. This is from my Jet Pens haul too. The Micron in the Hunter Green. I love it. I should get it in a smaller size. I don't know if it comes in a smaller than 05, but I've been loving this one too. And because I loved this one so much, but I was a little upset that it was water reactive, I actually purchased this four set of Copic multi-liners and uh, they're in sepia. And these are amazing. Um, these are really beautiful for drawing faces and bodies and anything kind of with a skin tone that uh, might be a little too harsh to draw in black. I've been experimenting with drawing uh, with colored outlines and I think it's working really, really well. So uh, the Copic multi-liners, they're pigment ink, they're waterproof and they're, you know, waterproof with your, the Copic proof is what they say on here, which just means you can use alcohol markers and they won't feather or bleed, and that's true. So I've used, cult, uh, I've used Copic multi-liners before in black, but these sepia-toned ones are stunning. I ratted out on this Uniball Signo, I know in the jet pens, I was like, the broad tip is just too broad for me, but uh, scratch that, take it back, it's been fantastic. I've just learned to uh, go with it, and uh, kind of work around how broad the tip is. And you know what? I've realized that actually lately I haven't been doing things that I've needed a super fine white tip gel pen for. And like I said, I've still got my um, Sakura Jelly Roll, so that's been fine. Uh, I haven't really had any problem with that. These are not new obsessions, but these two are new. These are Tim Holtz water brushes, and I just love pretty much any water brush, but these are uh, pretty... Um, these stand the test of time, and these are really good ones. These are new. I've lost my old ones. Uh, that's how much I love them. Oh, well, I didn't lose this one. This one's just full of black watercolor because sometimes I like to do gray washes uh, or gray shading, I guess, like just using them for shading. And um, this one's been battered and you can see it still comes to a nice fine point. There's one hair out of place, but that's not going to ruin your artwork. This is, I've literally had this one for years. So um, I'm really loving that I have these, these ones, this flat one, this brush, I think would be really good, um, you know, for like fashion illustration when you uh, use the chisel tip of a, an alcohol marker. I think this would be great to do the same effect with watercolor. So I'm really into these. You just have to be careful putting the brushes on. I think that's why I bend the bristles because I'm not careful about it. I'll figure that out. 
Another obsession I probably don't have to talk about because I've used them all the time is the Jane Davenport Mixed Media Watercolors. Now, this is the neutral palette. I've just cleaned this and it's already looking battered again. Um, and this is the Brights palette. I'm, um, I'm so far down on Best Friend. I can't wait to hit pan on that. And um, yeah, I mean, look, it looks like I've barely used them, but honestly, I go in on these almost on a daily basis. So the Jane Davenport Mixed Media Watercolors, I'm really, really obsessed with. It's really great if you want to check out all the light fastness and the pigment uh, info, all of that's listed on the... I believe it's on the website or you can read it on the packet. I know that if you type it into Google, you'll probably find what you're looking for, but um, really, really great stuff. I love how they pull and watercolor. So if we're going to talk about watercolors, I should probably talk about the Daniel Smith. And I've actually used my pencil tin from Jane to uh, put these in here. I just got these from Artistic Cat on Etsy and she's selling the... Um, the new Daniel Smith watercolors in a set of eight. And she's popped in this cute little um, dot card here too. I have a few dot cards laying around and I actually got for Christmas last year, but I've been like, this is one of those things that I do get too precious to use, the 328 color chart. Because I, I'm just, I'm enamored by the way it looks and I really, really do need to use it. But can you just get a load of those iridescent colors? I mean, I'm just kind of worried that if I do swatch them out, I'm going to have to buy them all. That iridescent scarab red, I mean, I just like the way that that looks right there. So, <laughs> um, yeah, so I'm, I'm really into Daniel Smith watercolors. They can be a little bit pricey, but that's why um, Artistic Cat, Cat's Corner on Etsy, you can uh, just buy half pans, which is much more affordable. And you can totally choose from, uh, you know, all the different colors that are available there. And uh, I've got here, I've got Moon Glow and Kyanite Genuine, and I've got Payne's Grey. So these three I actually have tubes of. I got the Payne's Grey because it came a part of the set, even though I didn't need it. But it is more effective for me to have these in a half pan. To have them dried out in a half pan, go in with a water brush, go in with a paintbrush, and, um, and use them that way. I, t I don't tend to grab the tubes and use watercolors already wet. Does that make sense? You know, straight out of the, the tube. So... I said tube, I almost said tube. I probably said tube already, but I'm working on my Australian pronunciation. Uh, <laughs> so um, also in here, if we're gonna talk about full favorites, uh, in the Jane Davenport Brights palette, I love Best Friend. I love Vitamin C in the Neutrals palette. I love Wisteria is one of the new Daniel Smith watercolors that I'm obsessed with. Uh, I love Lavender too. These are so pigmented. They come out amazing. Quinacridone Lilac is so bright. I cannot believe how bright that is. Um, and Moon Glow is an obvious obsession for many people. Kyanite Genuine, I don't know if you guys know about Kyanite Genuine, but that's like one of my all time faves. Uh, it's got this like, it's a genuine watercolor, which means like it's the pigment is from the mineral, Kyanite. And it just, it has this like blue kind of sparkle to it. The, it's a shimmer, but it's just stunning. So I mix these two together pretty much every time I use them. This is an amazing combination. If you're going for a sky, like a galaxy kind of thing, there is no easier way to do it than getting Moon Glow and Kyanite Genuine and just putting them together. I'm just putting it out there. I think I've found the easiest way to make a galaxy. I challenge you to find an easier way to get it because I think I've figured it out. This is the We Are Memory Keepers. Uh, I don't know what it's fully called, but it's basically just a hole puncher and it's got this guide on it so you can really figure out what you want to do. It's got a lock and, uh, you know, figure that out, but it punches through pretty much anything. Like I can do 50 sheets of cardstock at once. I could do a belt loop with this. It is so heavy duty and I'm obsessed. So this one's really, really great too. Something a little unusual, uh, the Tombow Mono Permanent Adhesive. This tape runner is fantastic. I've been not so crazy about getting a really flat, you know, everything glued down look in my journals, especially when I'm like scrapbooking type thing. I'm just happy to run some tape on the back and put it in. And uh, this has worked beautifully. I had an American Crafts one, um, the Sticky Thumb brand, and it was working really, really great until I bought refills. And I don't know because maybe I bought them off Amazon and they were an old refill, but the refills just it jacked up the the inside, it left tape everywhere, and it stopped working. So I'm curious to know what happens when I replace these with the refill, but uh, this has worked perfectly so far. So I'm really into the Tombow Mono Adhesive Tape Runner. Something I think everyone should have is a corner rounder. I believe this is 
just a cheap one I got off Amazon, but it still works fine. It works really beautifully. So I'm really into this corner rounder. I think having a corner rounder is just, it's a lifesaver when you want to make something look expensive. Because you know, if you get stuff printed, like with a company, they'll charge you extra for corner rounding. So it just makes sense that if you're going to hand out a card or, you know, something special that you've handmade, a corner rounder will make it look like you spent more money or you, like, it's just worth more. I don't know. I, that's what I'm, that's what I'm claiming it as. This is an easy way to make anything look expensive. <laughs> well, like cards and postcards and stuff. Even when you're sticking in ephemera, if you just want to cut it out and corner around it, it, it just makes it look different from the, you know, just cutting it and sticking it in. So I'm really into the corner round. I couldn't make a favorites video without including this platinum branded carbon ink fountain pen. This is an amazing pen to sketch with. Uh, if you're looking for them on Amazon, just search uh, platinum carbon ink fountain pen. I'm sure it'll come up or um, on jet pens. I know they sell these. These are, um, they're just amazing. Such a super fine sketchy line and the carbon ink makes it bulletproof. It's just completely resistant to water and anything you want to use with it once it's dry. So uh, yeah, I just, I love it. I love it. I love it. Thank you, Jane Davenport for introducing this to me. This was years ago. I, I saw her using these. Another amazing black pen is the Fude Ball black pen, super, super black ink, and it will just kind of write over everything. It's also pigment ink and water and fade proof. O-H-T-O, Oto is the brand, I believe. Um, but yeah, it's, it's made in Japan. So why is everything made in Japan just amazing? I love this, I love this, I love it, I love it. These Montana acrylic paint markers are just the bee's knees. This is 100% cyan, that's the color. I also have another one that I'm obsessed with called Malachite Green or Malachite, what's it called? Oh, Malachite Light is what that one's called. These ones pop up everywhere, all throughout my journals. Uh, these are a really thick tip. I don't know if you can get them in smaller because this says fine, so um, maybe if there's an extra fine, I don't know. But uh, these two are really great colors for the, the colors that I like to use. I love the Posca paint pens too, and uh, my favorite colors at the moment are light orange and slate gray. Something else that I just had in a video that I'd made, I don't know if it's up yet or it might be up another time. These are Crayola markers, but they were branded, I got these at an airport, I got these at Orlando airport. They were branded for adults, like the adult version of Crayola markers, because the color palette wasn't like a bright, bright rainbow palette, and they were kind of said they were for um, lettering. So they've got like a really fine tip. The ink is great. It's very wet, and I think, it, you know, it takes a certain kind of paper to make it look nice. Like sometimes it will really um, oversaturate and kind of pull up the fibers of the paper, but I love the colors, and from mixed media stuff, layering these over paint markers or paint, they work really well. So something else that's super weird, and I don't know where you would get it, but this sharpener, it's a cinema roll sharpener. <laughs> I actually think I got this when I was maybe 15 or 14, when I was going through my uh, Japanese stationery phase that never ended. Um, it's a double-ended, but it's actually not for two different pencil sizes. It's for the same pencil size, but one gives you like a longer, finer point, and the other one will make it a really short... Um, a really short tipped kind of feeling. Hang on, let me show you here. See how it's kind of short? Like a regular pencil sharpener, you've got that extra bit of wood, like it's a longer tip. I don't really know how to explain it. I feel like this just saves the pencil. Like it, you can just use it for longer if you're sharpening it with this end. So I don't know, for me this is uh, gonna save all my pencils, even though I'm yet to actually go through a pencil, uh, so, um, but yeah, I'm super into that. We're almost done, but I had to throw in the Jane Davenport Mermaid markers. They're just really fun and different to use. I love pooling them with color and using them for a bunch of different stuff. Everything I've been doing lately has just been so loose and, um, sketchy and messy, so, uh, these really work well for that because the brush tip I can, you know, obviously add all my details in with the brush and then just grabbing the water and pulling it out, uh, pulling all that ink around is just it's such a nice effect. I don't know if you guys know this, but I'm super into glitter and anything sparkly. This Studio G glitter glue I got from Walmart, uh, it was really inexpensive. I think it was like a dollar, um, but I use it sometimes. I don't think people like seeing glitter, and to be honest, I've left it out of a lot of stuff because it doesn't photograph well or scan well, and you can't really print glitter, which is unfortunate. But um, yeah, I do use this from time to time. I probably just more put it on my face and walk around the house with it. All right, and the last thing I wanted to include was the Sakura Souffle because I'm 
always talking about them. These, if you write really slowly with them, you'll, um, they'll have like a bit of a puffy effect, kind of like they've puffed up a little bit, like souffle. Um, but the only downside I have to these is that when you put them on, they're clear. And it's only when they dry do you see how uh, opaque they are. And I've got them in different colours here, like this orange and this green, uh, the purple and blue. But they dry a lot lighter than this. So they won't look like this colour once they're dry. They'll be a very soft pastel version of this but they're completely opaque. So if you can deal with seeing the invisible lines as you're using them, these are really, really amazing for opaque pens, which is something I know we're all looking for when we're doing mixed media because, you know, once the layers are down and we want to put something on top, it gets a little difficult. But uh, that's everything for my favorites for now. I'll probably be back, probably back, I'll probably be back another time with a bunch of new favorites, or maybe I'm just gonna make the same video because everything I use already I completely love. Um, but yeah, anyway, I hope you enjoyed that. If any of these are your favorites, let me know. If there's something missing from here that you think I need, I'm dying to try, uh, let me know in the comments below. And yeah, hope you enjoyed seeing all my favorite things. Bye.